Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome once again to the Grand Oasis Arena here in Cancun, Quintana Roo, Mexico. This is Golden Boy Boxing on ESPN. Our main event of the evening is scheduled for 10 rounds and will be contested for the vacant WBO International Super Featherweight Championship. The main event is brought to you by Oscar De La Hoya's Golden Boy Promotions and Pepe Gomez Cancun Boxing. It's presented by Tecate, the official beer of boxing. Hennessy, never stop, never settle. The Grand Oasis Cancun, Grand Oasis loves you. Grupo Keki and Boxing Time. The main event is sanctioned by La Comisión de Boxe y Lucha Libre, Eliseo Gonzalez, president. It's also sanctioned by the World Boxing Organization. The president is Francisco Paco Valcarcel, the supervisor, and the ring is Edgardo Lopez Sasso. The judges for this contest are Victor Salmon, Hernando Stidel, and Luis Ruiz. And controlling the action at the sound of the bell, the referee in charge is Miguel Canul Sensores. And now, live from Cancun, Mexico, 10 rounds for the WBO International Super Featherweight Championship. Damas y Caballeros, ladies and gentlemen, it's go time! <laughs> Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner. He weighed in at 128 and three quarter pounds. His impressive professional record consists of 20 victories against four defeats, 12 wins coming by way of knockout. Wearing blue trimmed with white and hailing from San Onofre, Colombia. Ladies and gentlemen, Davies El Cabo Basta. And his opponent across the ring fights out of the red corner. He weighed in at 129 and one half pounds. He is undefeated as a professional with 16 victories, zero defeats and one draw, six wins coming by way of knockout. Wearing red, black, and silver and hailing from Washington, D.C. He is the WBC Youth Silver Super Featherweight Champion. Please welcome Lamont. Roach Jr. Remember what I told you in the looking rooms, please make a good clean fight and make it the best of the night. And now, touch your gloves, go to the corner, we'll hear the best, throw the best punches. Recuerda lo que platicamos en los vestidores, vamos a hacer una pelea limpia y bonita, la mejor de la noche. Choca tus guantes, cuando suena la campana, salen tirando sus mejores golpes. Suerte a los dos. Good luck. Ready to go here with our main event of the evening, Lamont Roach Jr. Trying to bounce back from that undeserved draw against Orlando Cruz in Puerto Rico says David Julio Vasa will pay the price for what I've learned and what that lesson taught me. Now neither fighter is the hometown fighter here in Cancun, Mexico, but Lamont Roach Jr. did bring between 25 to 30 family members who got stuck behind David Vasa's corner, but he said that's okay, that's just part of the strat strategy to try to distract me. I'm in the ring. It's yeah. all good. He's smart like that. Um, he didn't just bring family to this fight. I, I see a lot of energy and intensity in his body language at the start of this bout. Um, let's see if he can carry it through the opening round and if he can make something eye-catching happen early in this fight. I think the fight with Orlando Cruz let Golden Boy know that he's at a certain level and he's one of their top prospects and that he has the foundation, he has the ability to go on to be a legitimate contender at 130 pounds, maybe even at 135 pounds. But where they need to help Lamont out is making for more entertaining fights. Um, Cruz was a very difficult style for any young fighter to look good against. Now with Bassa, you have a guy who's mature and experienced like Cruz, not as ring savvy, and probably not as durable as the Puerto Rican was. So we have the potential for a fight because Bassa, the Colombian, does like to fight, he likes to hit back. 
we have the potential for a more entertaining fight, and that's what Bojan needs. He needs it to have the type of fights that are going to get fight fans talking about it. He's got the substance, but does Lamont Roach have the sizzle with just six knockouts and 17 pro fights, 16 of those wins? We talk about that draw against Orlando Cruz in his last time out. And this is the second consecutive southpaw that he's faced. He says he doesn't have trouble with them, but he should not with his amateur background. He would probably face, you know, 50 southpaws during his amateur career. He probably spars with them all the time as well. He did spar uh, Michael Reed and Jordan White for this fight in a 10-week training camp. That's good work. That is really good work. Yes, yeah. indeed. And he yes, indeed, Reed. And, he that. <laughs> and uh, you know, he's a man who's fought. You know, he sparred Lamont Peterson, Hank Lundy, so he's fought against heavy-handed fighters in the gym. He knows what it takes to take those shots. Now he knows boxing. I mean, the, you know, like, like I think he's one of the the better young technicians at 130 pounds. But because of that KO ratio, and because of his temperament, he's a, he's a low key man outside of the ring, and he's pretty laid back in the ring. He doesn't press the issue. And because of that, he's, he's, he's under the radar. He's not gonna draw attention to himself like a Ryan Garcia, who has a flashy, flamboyant style, and is also social media savvy. Tonight's the main event, Lamont Roach Jr. taking on David Julio Vasa, Franco Gonzalez with the instructions there for his charge and Lamont Roach Sr. for his son, Dougie. Yeah, it was a nice right to the armpit of the Colombian. Um, that's the kind of aggression we want to see more of. Here's the right hand, and I think that is one of uh, Lamont Roach's best punches. He counters well with the hook, as Orlando Cruz learned in the ninth round of their fight. <laughs> Yes. Unfortunately, the person who didn't learn that was referee Luis Pavon, who let it go. So the rest of the world saw it, except the only one that mattered. But nonetheless, lesson learned, and now he's trying to put that to work here in our main event this evening. Third time that Lamont Roach is headlining Golden Boy Boxing on ESPN Show. And there you see the skill. First with the right cross lead, moves laterally, and then connects with the left hook. You see speed, you see uh, the general, ring generalship and the athleticism from Lamont Roach Jr. Yeah, and I've been watching Lamont fight for about three years now. I think I've called six of his fights. Um, I've seen him grow up. I've seen him mature physically. Yes. Um, and there is athleticism there. He always had the foundation, the fundamentals, the, the technique. You see how high he keeps those gloves. He's very good at picking off gloves uh, when you know, his, his, his opponents are trying to put hands on him. Um, if there's one room for improvement, uh, improvement apart from being a little bit more aggressive when need be, uh, he is kind of stiff in his upper right. body. Uh, you don't see a lot in the way of head and upper body movement. He gets caught there with the body shot, baby. That's the type of shot that no matter whether you move your waist and head a lot, you're going to get caught. That's the one shot that's always going to land. But that's a smart and that's a smart punch from the veteran. <laughs> oh, nice uppercut from Lamont Rhodes Jr. Just loaded up and got Basa coming in. Very accurate. Very accurate shot by Roach. Roach, you know, he works angles well. Why? Because he studies mechanical engineering at the University of Maryland, although he's put school on hold to really put all his eggs in the boxing basket for right now. And uh, he's still unbeaten in 17 professional fights. Wants to, wants to keep it this way against a fighter who is now 37 years old but didn't get started until he was 32 years old in the pro game. So he had a long amateur career in baby career. Mbasa's long amateur career was tied in with military service, right. not correct? He's the corporal because before he became a sergeant, he was a corporal in the Colombian military, 
And he's got to stay away from that big right hand bomb of Lamont Rhodes Jr. That's a nice quick right hand from the Southpaw. That's the thing about Bossa. He will he will hit you back. Last time I saw him live, uh, he was fighting Joette Gonzalez. I think it was last year in, in Carson. And he was stopped in the fifth round of that fight, but he made it a fight for as long as it lasted. Yeah, you can't step into that ring at the Stub Up Center and not make a good fight. It, it's something in the air. The fighters know it. I don't know what they give them in the water before they come out, but that's a great place to watch a fight. But that's also a tradition of Colombian fighters where with any level, they're supposed to have heart. And they, have, they bring that pride into the ring with them. It's from the land of Miguel Capilora, Monteria, Colombia. Big right hand lands by Lamont Roach. He timed that perfectly. And he caught Bassa as Bassa was sort of circling away. We talked about his athleticism, his footwork early on, and that was a perfect example of just how quick he is, how he, he moves his legs to set himself up, creates leverage for himself. So, you know, he's got all the tools. It's all about putting it together to, to become that fighter that Golden Boy wants him to become. I agree 100%. That was very well put. He's got the tools, got to put them together to make for a performance that people are buzzing about, that they're talking about, that they're tweeting about. You mentioned Ryan Garcia, there's Virgil Ortiz, another young prospect right. in the same weight class. What do they have, Dougie? Yeah, they've got power. Uh, Virgil Ortiz is just as laid back, low key, kind of shy even as Lamont Roach Jr. is, but he makes a lot of noise with those fists. So after 10 pro bouts, everyone's still they're talking about Virgil Ortiz like he's a top prospect, and he is. But guess what? So is Roach. Can't sleep on a talent like Lamont Roach Jr. He's from the D.C. area, and he just reminds me of a fighter like Gear Russell Jr., who has that skill, and I hope he doesn't follow that same blueprint of not fighting enough because that's, that's something devastating for a career. But Lamont Roach Jr. has that skill set to be special. Well, I like the focus and intensity we've seen so far in this fight. Uh, and Basso remains dangerous. That was a nice left hand by the veteran. They came in from the outside, just kind of caught the mock roach, studying a little bit too much. You know what? It was actually it was a right, right yeah. because he was uh, in, a, in an orthodox stance briefly. See the head from Baby Julio Basso. Yeah, Basso's crafty. He's shifting in there. And he has to be, and if you look at their bodies, he doesn't look like he's a, a, a big junior lightweight. In fact, he, he looks like he could make 126 easily. Something that may go unnoticed, the two-inch reach advantage for David Julio Bassa. So if he can stay on the outside and, and make Lamont Roach come in, he can make him pay as he comes in. Lamont <laughs> Roach has got to come in with a jab. You know, we haven't seen many jabs tonight, right? <laughs> it's been consistent in this fight as well. It was okay in the opener. It was okay in that six rounder. It's not okay in this fight. This is the main event. This is a 10 rounder. This is for a, a, a minor belt that will get the winner ranked in the WBI. Oh, big right hand from the Mark Junior drops Julio Bassa. Well, look at the smile on Bassa's face. I like his attitude. He's here because he's going to get up and fight. What? Trying to put some scissors tonight. Big left hand from Lamont Rose Jr. As he has Julio Massa once again in trouble. Oh, he's opening up with every shot. His left for wobbly once again. That big right hand. And Julio Massa Jr. is looking for one shot to 
to keep the Roach Jr. off of him. Now, this isn't Roach the technician. This is Roach the fighter. This is what we want to see. Impressive right hand from Lamont Roach Jr. Drops Davies Julio Baza, listening to his father. And I bet his father's going to tell him that he got a little bit wild. All right, Dougie, just walk us through the, the knockdown. There's a lead right hand followed by a right cross. So the first right hand set up the second right hand. There's the first right hand, and there's the second right hand, which is more of a cross, and it was delivered with more power. Down goes the Colombian to the seat of his trunks. Have a one, seat, my and man. there's the other one. The second right hand flipped Bassa as he was backing out. And you saw just how fast it happened because he had time to throw that lead right hand, then miss the left hook, but came right back. Hey, look. Bassa didn't okay, expect it. Get yeah. Yeah. Hey, hey, don't, don't get your confidence, says Franco Gonzalez okay. in the corner of Bassa. Let's break him there. Let's break him there. Check it out. Same way you got him. Come on. And sweep on it. Sweep on it. ESPN and coming to you live from the Grand Oasis Cancun. Dougie Fisher alongside Bernardo Osuna. Hey, we brought you out to Cancun, man, and you've seen some good fights tonight. Good Absolutely. action. No, this was uh, worth the trip. It's <laughs> always worth the trip to go to Cancun because it's beautiful. You throw in entertaining boxing with it, hey, that's real paradise. All right, so in the corner for uh, Baby and Julio Bassa, Franco Gonzalez was saying, don't get overconfident. You got to go out there and start gaining his respect. So far, power punches marking a huge difference. Look at Roach throwing 97 power punches and that is at a 43% clip. So Lamont Roach, we talked about his effectiveness, we talked about his accuracy, and both are coming to light here through the first four rounds of this fight. And I think you mentioned that in the first three rounds, Roach wasn't jabbing him. He didn't need the jab to get that knockdown because he's so quick and accurate with his lead right, but he's working the jab here in round four. So he's not getting carried away with the knockdown. It's important. He's still working his way back in to lead another right hand. Sometimes fighters fall in love with that one shot knockout and disregard how they were able to get there. And, and LeBron Rose Jr. going back to basics, working his way back in against uh, Julio Massa, who continues to be dangerous. I mean, when you look at his record, 12 of his 20 wins have come by knockout. So the Colombian continues to be a formidable throw in there. Yeah, he's cagey, and I would say that Roach is applying smart pressure right now. Trying to faint the, faint the Colombian out of position and catch him. He but he, with that right and try to land that left hook to the body. Right, but he's also working his jab sporadically. Maybe that'd be the one thing to improve on here in this fight is establish the jab a lot more, and that'll create opportunities like from there, kind of a flash jab, just a throwaway jab, and that's that right hand. Lamont is a natural kind of puncher. He would be much more at home if Bassa was putting pressure on him. Bassa's not going to make it that easy. That open hand right once again, and tries to connect to the body, but Bassa's nowhere to be found for that second shot. He already found out what a second right hand could do to him. Right, so Bassa's not going to try to take the fight to Roach, but that doesn't mean he's purely in survival mode. He is, he is in here trying to box and trying to get something done. He's, trying, he's still trying to win.
All right, power punches are the key to this fight. Lamont Rose Jr., he tends to land 43.6 coming into this fight, while his opponents land only 22%. That is higher than the 36% for the lightweight average. And we saw in the earlier round, Dougie, he was right about there with 48 punches landed, although he only landed six in that fourth round. Maybe dialed them back a little bit more than we expected after dropping Vasa in that third round. I think so. I think he was probably upset with himself because after he scored the knockdown, he was just throwing one power punch at a time instead of setting up that, that power with the jab or throwing combinations or going to the body. So he himself knew that he kind of lost his head in the fire at the end of that round, and so he wanted to come out and get back to technical boxing. But with some smart, with some intensity and some smart pressure. Big right hand there from Lamont Rose Jr. This time it was the lead right that did the damage, but Julio Vasa showing a lot of resistance here through the first five rounds of this fight, although he already went down in round three. The right hand, particularly a lead right hand, a sneaky lead right hand, and we just saw it again, is the choice punch that Orthodox fighters land in South Cross. Another choice punch an Orthodox fighter to land against the Southpaw is Cook, which you have to tie him over the Southpaw's jab. Tried to do it there with Lamont Rose Jr. Every time that Julio Massa has been down in his career, be it against Joel Gonzalez in August 2017, Kenji Ogawa in September 25th, uh, 2015 in his first professional loss, and now against Lamont Roach Jr. It's been with right hand. It's good research, man. All right. You know, when Roach wants to be, he can be a very good body puncher. And he doesn't seem to be able to get uh, as close to Bossa on a consistent basis for us to see that body work. Now, a lot of times, Doug, it's because he's a southpaw, you know, it changes the angle of attack. True. But right, because their front feet meet each other. Um, but I, also, I think it's the lateral movement from, from Vasa. It doesn't look like a 37 year old, but that was a nice right hand for the body. It was, and then he up the yeah. You don't see the, the wear and tear, even though he's 37 years old, because he started boxing as a pro until he was 32, after a 10 year amateur career and military career. Yeah, and, and maybe he's, uh, he lives a Spartan lifestyle. And yeah, he's, he's, uh, he moves around pretty well for a 37 year old. Got decent hand speed. He's got nice footwork, and that you see, you see he landed that set left. Nice one two combination. Yeah. Maybe Julio Massa, who hasn't done much this time. There's that left foot to the liver. From the Mont Rose Jr. follows it up with a right to the body as well. And then tries to go up there. And you see the leg not very steady from David Julio Massa. Oh, nice right there from the Mont Roach Jr. And yeah, well, Massa threw himself off balance. Um, and Roach ducked that punch and caused that to happen. Halfway through this fight from Cancun, Mexico. Golden Boy Boxing on ESPN. Second half of this scheduled 10 rounder, our main event of the evening between Lamont Roach Jr. and Davey Julio Bassa. Bernardo Osuna alongside Dougie Fitcher. Here's a big shot we saw in that round, Dougie. 
Yeah, that was a short right cross. And like I said, Roach is a, a natural counter puncher. It's like it's instinctual. The fighter's in range, and the, the, the fist has a mind of its own. Oh, low, low there? Maybe Julio Vasa is the Marcos Jr. will get some time to walk it off. First low blow of this whole fight. It's been a very clean fight. Haven't had to mention Miguel Canul Sansor is the third man in the ring. Yeah, I, because this is the first foul, at least clear foul, I, 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 I don't think that it was intentional by any means from Vasa. Of course, the replay. The replay will let us know. Nine, box. Yes, yeah, so he's, he's holding him from behind. Holding him down was the yeah. Lamont Rose so he ended up paying the price. Nice right hand from the outside. Lamont Rose Jr. is very close down. David Villanueva. The legs got tied up on the toe. Rose is going to be careful about that. Always that battle between the South Point and Orthodox fighter. Who can establish that dominant outside foot? I like that Rose is trying to punch during a clinch or any sort of grappling. I'd love to see more body work from Rose. I think that's the best way to get to an older fighter. Body work and a jab. I mean, you've got the youth and you've got the speed and you've got the skill and you've got to put it to use, especially against a better fighter like. Davey Julio Vasco. He's sneaky because the Colombian landed a nice left hook as, as he was dipping. Stop. Not Stop. completely Stop. flush, but Stop. I mean, this is the game of millimeters. And you're right. And it's a game of timing. Um, and it's a game of focus. And uh, Roach can't drop his guard for a second against Vasco because Vasco is cagey and smart. And he's got guts. He's, if he sees an opening, he will take it. He's not in here just to get this guy around. He's not in here just to survive and say, hey, I'm going to this. He wants to win this fight. Well, this is Boss's 25th fight. He's 21 of those in Colombia, his native land. Three times in the U.S. His first professional loss happened in Japan. And now this is his first fight on Mexican soil. That tells you a lot about his character. He was willing to travel all the way to Japan. He faced the favorite fighter, a naturally bigger, stronger fighter, and Kenichi Ogawa. Guy who went on to be a contender at 140 pounds. Nice combination punches from Roach, and then he just stays there and admires his work and gets clipped by a left hook. Yeah. Boss has got character. Oh, he trips. Yeah, let's go. Legs get entangled again. comes to an end from Cancun, Mexico. Hey! 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 Get rid of him! You stay tight. This what the body short shots. Catch, pull, catch and shoot. Catch and shoot the inside. Angles though, don't go squared up. That's why he getting a hold of you, man. Step over that little angle on him, all right? Get ready to bump with him. Break his ass, break the body down. Bob, Bob, we got to stop this one. You hear me, man? Don't stop punching. You got it in, bro. Come on, come on, come on. No, no. Oh, the fight is over. The corner of Davy Julio Vasa. Eufrasio Franco Gonzalez says no mas. And Lamont Roach Jr. gets his win by knockout. He did drop his opponent in the third round, wasn't able to finish the job, but apparently did just enough damage, Dougie, to get the stoppage win tonight. It's an interesting stoppage. I wonder if Bassa has suffered some kind of injury, if one of his hands hurt or anything like that. 
It didn't look like he was being physically overwhelmed by Roach, but maybe his corner saw the writing on the wall. Um, I didn't score a single round for Bassa, and it, it, Roach was applying gradual, smart pressure. Maybe they just figured, let's, let's cut the court now, because you might get hurt later in the fight. You know, Lamont Roach Sr., who's just hugging his son, uh, talked to me yesterday in the hallway here at the hotel, and he told me, we have a new approach. He understood from his last fight what he has to do, and maybe he pulled back a little bit after dropping uh, Massa in round number three, but there was no doubt who was in control the entire fight tonight. Absolutely. Lamont was in control, and he was doing it with smart aggression, smart pressure. He was, he was boxing to his character, which is that of an intelligent technician, but we saw a little bit more fire. And I love that when he knocked him down, he tried to close the show. He really did, and that's what we need to see. And Lamont Roach improving now to 17-0-1, earning his seventh knockout as a pro. And when we take a look at how he's done in his last few fights, this will help him get over that hump of the draw against Orlando Cruz, who was awkward, who was tough. And at the end, here, he fought another tough, awkward southpaw, but he ended up getting the knockout, the TKO win. All right, we'll be back with the official time of the stoppage from Cancun, Mexico. This is Golden Boy Boxing on ESPN. That's where I want to be, on the beach. Ladies and gentlemen, the referee in charge of the action, Miguel Sanul Sansores, calls for a halt to this contest based on information provided by the blue corner. The official time comes at the start of round number seven. Your winner by TKO and still undefeated, the new WBO International Super Featherweight Champion from Washington, D.C., Lamont Rose.